Welcome to Dunamis 5, Spiritual Warfare and Kingdom Advancement. This is lesson number one, an introduction to spiritual warfare. The aim of the Dunamis courses is to equip congregations and individuals to advance the kingdom of God. And to do so uh, is to initiate conflict, not just physical, but also spiritual. In this fifth Dunamis course, this is an introduction to spiritual warfare, um, or the kind of spiritual pushback that will be inevitable if you are advancing the kingdom of God. We'll talk about the two kingdoms that are an, in conflict, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. We'll talk about how to prepare for battle. We'll talk about the battle that is within your heart and the battle that is outside, without your heart. We'll talk about how demons can attach themselves to us and how we can free people from those demons. And then finally, we'll look at the spiritual struggle in a larger sense, not just with individuals, but uh, how we can engage in spiritual warfare that will free neighborhoods or regions and even nations. Now, Dunamis 5 is only an introduction to a vast subject, but even with an introduction, you will be amazed at how these simple principles will equip you for greater spiritual victory. Spiritual warfare does not mean battling people or unjust social structures. It means battling the spiritual forces of wickedness that are behind the evil actors or behind the unjust systems. Now, it can look like any number of things and chances are you've already experienced it. And it's often very subtle. It could be, say a PowerPoint suddenly doesn't work uh, just before your Sunday school class or a key leader uh, gets a stomach flu the night before an important meeting at your church. It could be a negative voice in your head, something that's belittling you, uh, trying to convince you that everything you've done for the kingdom is worthless, or that your prayers are fruitless, they will, they will never change anything. It could be more direct, um, like getting nightmares or uh, crippling fears coming upon you. The tell that this is the devil's hand in it and all these phenomena is that they are all designed to frustrate your efforts to advance the kingdom. That's what they're doing. And if that's what's going on, it could be that you're experiencing spiritual warfare. At this point, some of you are probably saying, Spiritual warfare, really? I've experienced all of this stuff and more. How do I know there's not a perfectly rational explanation to all of these struggles? One that doesn't involve angels and demons. I mean, true, struggle and conflict is part of the human condition. And many people over the years have given many different explanations. Um, Charles Darwin gave a biological explanation, called it the, the survival of the fittest, the struggle to survive. Uh, Karl Marx saw it as a class struggle. Abraham Maslow, a humanist psychologist, described this struggle as essential for self-actualization. All the great philosophies and religions talk about this struggle and they have their own explanations as to the source. But the bottom line is, for Christians, we believe in spiritual warfare because that's what the Bible describes it as. Uh, for example, Paul in Ephesians says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All through scripture, we see signs of this battle, and it gets clearer and clearer and clearer as we go through scripture, finally with Jesus talking about it very directly, and then with the apostles talking even more directly about it. So, as Christians, we believe in spiritual warfare because that's how the Bible describes it.
Okay, so where are you on this I believe in spiritual warfare scale? Now, if you are coming from a Western worldview, um, you'll be skeptical and think that the devil has very little influence or power. You might have a hard time believing in angels and demons at all. Uh, for you, this dunamis course might be an exercise in medieval fantasy or an unbridled speculation into things in which we can have no useful or accurate knowledge. If you're coming from the Eastern worldview, you might say, well, of course, uh, there's spiritual warfare. There's angels and demons everywhere. You might even um, agree with the Taoist principle of yin and yang, that the struggle we feel is the fact that the, the whole universe is this constant struggle between the forces of light and the forces of darkness, uh, between positive versus negative, God and the devil. The Eastern worldview gives angels and demons way too much influence and power. So the dunamis course, we're going to try to walk a fine line between the two. We are going to attempt to take spiritual warfare seriously, but not too seriously. Uh, the main focus for us as Christians should be on Jesus Christ and the advancement of the kingdom of God. However, we will do this being aware of the forces arrayed against us so that we will not be naive about the battle that we're in the middle of. C.S. Lewis expresses this well in his introduction to the screw tape letters. He said, there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence, and the other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. They themselves are equally pleased by both errors and hail a materialist and a magician with the same delight. So, we are going to attempt to keep our eyes on Jesus, but also be aware of the battle that we're in the midst of. Let me give you a personal story. Um, about 15, 16 years ago, um, I was uh, pastoring a struggling church in downtown Seattle. It had just begun. And I remember uh, I had a staff devotion. I led a staff devotion. And I began talking about the struggles I had. And I began wondering with my staff if there was something more to my struggles than just difficult people in trying circumstances. Uh, I wondered if there were dark forces at work. So I started talking about spiritual warfare. And when I was finished, one by one, by one uh, my staff members all talked about their own struggles and how unreasonably difficult it had been for them and how this model of spiritual warfare seemed to explain the data in the way that made the most sense and also gave them strategies on how to fight back. Um, this was uh, the beginning of when I began taking spiritual warfare seriously and how I began to see the effectiveness of it, not just to explain certain circumstances, but also to give strategy on how to advance the kingdom in the midst of these struggles. To mature as Christians, we must lose our spiritual naivete. For as Christians, we are engaged in a battle. From the creation of the world until the return of Christ, the devil and his forces of darkness have been at work to enslave the world and are at war with the church whose goal is to free the world. To engage in spiritual warfare is not just a matter of self-defense. It is a matter of faithful obedience to Jesus who calls us to know our enemy and to do battle with him. Um, Jesus said this to Peter in Matthew 16. On this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. What he is alluding to with the gates of hell 
was the way an ancient city was organized, that there'd be a city wall and that at the gates, the main gates, the elders or the leaders of the city would meet in order to rule, in order to strategize how to solve problems. So he's saying that there's leaders in hell that meet together in order to strategize on how to overcome us, how to further their kingdom, further their work and will. Um, so every day we must be prepared to do battle with these leaders that are battling us. Paul wrote in Ephesians, um, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. The devil's schemes. For he is trying to enslave people, but the work that we've been called to is to deliver people from the kingdom of Satan and bring them into the kingdom of God. As Paul puts in Colossians, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. When you begin to grow as a Christian, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and are uh, beginning to exercise gifts of the Spirit, when you begin to advance the kingdom of God, you will arouse the attention of the enemy. Uh, that is when he will begin to come against you and to, uh, to resist your efforts to advance God's kingdom. When Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit after his baptism and he was led into the wilderness, that's when Satan came in order to tempt him, in order to try to subvert his ministry, in order to, to nip it in the bud. He had, he had uh, Jesus had gotten the enemy's attention and that was the time he came to attack him. Likewise, as we begin to invite people to follow Christ and we begin to teach them how to walk with Christ and to grow in their faith, an essential component of this training is to train them in spiritual warfare so that they will be prepared for the resistance that they will receive when they too arouse the attention of the enemy. Finally, when Jesus went out proclaiming the kingdom of God, he also cast evil spirits out of people. And when Jesus commissioned his followers to go out and proclaim the kingdom of God, he gave them authority to do the same. Uh, Luke chapter nine. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God. In Mark 16, 7, Jesus said that casting out demons was to be a sign following those who believe. Now, this doesn't mean that all Christians are to have a deliverance ministry, but it does mean that he expects that with the advancement of the kingdom of God, the casting out of demons should be a regular part of it. So, casting out demons, a regular part of being church. <laughs> In all the lessons that are ahead, keep your eyes on Jesus, not on the devil, not on evil spirits, not on spiritual warfare, for the devil is an obstacle. He's not the objective. And be encouraged. This work of freeing ourselves and others from the devil's grip brings tremendous joy. Uh, it also um, brings confirming proof as to the truth of the Bible uh, and also the goodness of the gospel. Remember the, the, uh, the Gerasene demoniac after he was delivered, he wanted to go follow Jesus. Or Mary Magdalene, from whom Jesus had cast out seven demons, she was one of the first to go to the tomb and to see the resurrected Jesus and was one of the very first to proclaim that Jesus is risen. <laughs> when the 72 had come back from a preaching tour, one in which Jesus gave them authority over demons, they returned with joy and they said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you 
but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The same joy awaits you as you become more effective in freeing others from the grip of the devil, uh, setting them free to have a more single-minded and passionate focus on Jesus and his kingdom. Please pray with me. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much that you secured our victory over all the forces of darkness, of unbelief, of skepticism, of disease, of bondage. Protect us as we learn these valuable lessons in spiritual warfare so that we can be your hands and feet in setting your dear ones free as well. So they may experience the joy that you now have at the right hand of the Father. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you and God bless you.